Hi, this is Lisa. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making a working snaffle bridle. And this is something you'd be using for ranch riding or dressage. And depending on the class you're in, there's various rules for it. But in general, most horses can be ridden in snaffle these days, which I think is fantastic. And this bridle will have the snaffle. It needs a leather curb. It needs a throat latch. And this one has a futurity knot at the front. And for snaffle bridle, you also need to use split reins. You can't use rommel reins. Of course, in some classes, you could also use gaming reins, but for now, we're just gonna use split reins for this tutorial. Let's get started. For this project, we can use 2.5 millimeter or three millimeter lace. There is the 2.5 millimeter, sorry, two, yeah, 2.5 millimeter, and there is the three millimeter. And these are coming from Dane Craft Leather, and she is really getting into supporting the model horse industry. So when you purchase it, you can buy it in all sorts of colors. This is brandy, and you can order it split by the meter. And when you do order it, say you're using, using it for model horse tack, and she has just released a new width of leather, which is 1.5 millimeters, half of that. I'll leave a link to her site below. For ranch tack, you want fairly simple buckles uh, without any silver. You can put a little bit of concho, a concho on it, but uh, you don't need to. Probably better if you don't. And now I've just got basic buckles from Rio Rondo, and again, I'll leave a link below for that, to fit the leather of your choice. And I'm using 2.5 mils. To clean the edges of the buckles, I use an army painter trimmer that I also use for miniatures. And it gets right in there and gets rid of any of the extra flashing. Next, we're going to cut a piece of leather about the length from the nose to the ear. You need two of those. Before gluing it, you can put a little bit of gum track again on the back just to smooth out the leather that last little bit. But when it comes pre-skived, it pretty much doesn't need much extra work. For the keepers, I've taken a piece of lace and I'm going to thin that down even more. Now you can, this is perfect for the 1.5 millimeter lace. Keeper, cut a piece just a little longer than half an inch. Then with some needle nose pliers, thin ones, I'm gonna put that somewhere around the middle. Bend one piece over, apply glue, and bring this other piece around and push it down on top. Thread one of your buckles onto each small, each of the two small pieces then slide the keeper on. And you want the uh, folded glued end underneath. Then we're just gonna turn this down and glue that over top of the keeper, leaving enough room so that we have room for the piece of leather to come through. And you make sure that there's enough room there for a piece of leather to come through. Clover clips are great for holding onto a piece once you apply glue. For the bit rings, you're gonna need a jump ring. And this is a JR7 from Rio Rondo, which is about eight millimeters outside diameter. You can go one size less or not. But I like these because they have a nice thick uh, wire as opposed to thin, and it really does look like a bit. Make sure your jump rings close nicely, no big gaps. So I'm gonna thread the jump ring onto the other end of this, and then with a horse, and with this buckle just above the eye, I want to work this so that my snaffle bit is in the mouth, and this is just above the eye. Once I have where I want it, I'm going to place a hard bend here. Now option one, is to just trim that and glue it down. For option two, I'm gonna use some waxed cord. This is like a thread that I've picked up at Michael's in the beading area. And with the leather folded, I have a T-pin here. And I'm going to take the T-pin and put in two holes and I'm going through both layers of the leather. And I'll show you in a sec once I've got it through. The ring will sit there and there's a hole here and a hole here. Then I'm gonna put another hole right next to each of them, further away. One on that side, and one equal distance on the other side. 
away from the end of the bit. So when I fold it, they will pretty much line up. So I have holes on that side and holes on that side. I've threaded the waxed cord onto the thinnest needle I can. Going from the right side to the wrong side, I'm carefully gonna go down through the one hole and the matching hole on the other side. To be very careful here and just do one side at a time. And I'm just carefully wiggling it over. Here it is once it's through the front, it's going through, through the back. Then I'm gonna turn the needle around and go right back through. First this side, the back piece, and then back to the front. As the leather is thin, you want the needle to be going parallel with the leather so it doesn't tear it. Now we have the first one on. I am going to scooch that down so that the needle stays on for the second one. I don't have to fight fighting threading the needle again. So I'm gonna bring that down, leaving about an inch. Cut that off. And then I'm gonna tie this. And there that is with just one knot. If you want that to kind of go down the same way, I'm gonna snip some of that off, leave some of it there. Then I'm gonna turn this around and trim off most of this extra and glue down this little tab. The length of these, I want them to be about the length of that bit there. A little bit of an angle on my snips. And then if you want, remember you want a right and a left side, you might wanna tack a little bit of glue there as well. So I'm just applying a little bit of glue underneath, just spot there, so that when I turn it, it always goes in the one direction and looks like it's hanging down. You may also want to add a little glue into that hole there and line up the crack of the bit where it opens and glue that in. So I'm going to aim those down and put on a clip. While that is drying, I'm gonna take another piece of the leather, measure it around to go as a throat latch, leave enough room for the buckle, and prep that with your gum tagus scent if you want, and I don't know if I'll ever be able to pronounce that properly. Now I've threaded the buckle on this one and another keeper, and then again, I'm gonna fold that down and glue it on top of the keeper. For the brow band, I have two pieces that are three and a half inches each, and I'll trim them once we're done. Now this step depends on the size, because this is where your piece going down to the bit, plus your brow band is gonna go. So you're gonna leave enough room for that, open, and then glue a little bit. For this model, I seem to think that about half an inch here before the fold will work fine. So I've applied glue to about a quarter of an inch, folded at the half inch mark, put on a clip, and I've done that to both pieces. Make sure you've left enough room for both of those pieces. Uh, there's another one, so two of these pieces to go through. Now with one of these pieces, I'm gonna put this where I want the side to be and mark the center. If it helps, put a piece of leather through so you can see where it sits and that'll help you find the center better. By using a knife, where you've marked the center, you're gonna very, very carefully cut a slit I'm just going to just do that slowly. And the slit has to be big enough to pass a piece of leather through. And there is the slit. You can use a pin to make sure it's big enough. Now I'm going to take the other piece, put a point on the end, and I'm going to push it up through that slit. So that came in from the back to the front. 
and there are the two pieces. And that actually was quite easy to do if you made the slit and used the pin to make sure it was big enough. Now I have them even on both sides and that's gonna be the length of my brow band. I am then gonna take one of these pieces, roll it under, and then bring it down and poke it through like that. On the other side, I'm gonna bring that around and under and poke it through. Like that. And I'm gonna carefully tighten both of those little knots. Just to repeat that the piece that came through gets wrapped under, the piece comes down. You can see there, that is the piece that came through. And the other piece with the slit did the same on this side. It went under and around. Very, very simple concept. And I cut another piece of leather, just probably go to the cheek on one side to the cheek on the other. Cut that. And I'm gonna put points, a little point on each side. Right through there. So here's what we have so far. You can see I have a right and left side here. And what I'm gonna do is take this piece and push it down both sides of the brow band. Like that. I'm next gonna take the throat latch with a buckle on this side and underneath this piece, I'm going to poke that under. Bring it around. And again, under on this side. On the horse's right side, I'm going to buckle up this piece. And on the left side, I'm going to buckle up this piece. Make sure you don't buckle it to the throat latch. Buckle it to that single last piece we cut. check the size on the model which I want. You can trim these as much as you want or leave them to make it very adjustable and then they go into the keeper. And then with the futurity knot here, we're just gonna cut them. Again, you can pick your own length on how big you want them and put a little point on the end of it. Now a snaffle bridle in Western must have a chin strap or a leather hobble. These are leather for snaffles and you're gonna want the thinnest piece of leather you have. And if you can get 1.5 millimeter ordered, that is perfect. Or take a wider piece and thin it down a little. You can do it with knife or you can do it with scissors. Here I have a Rio Rondo buckle B13, nice and thin. The purpose of a chin strap on a snaffle is to just stop it from, from allowing the bit to go through the horse's mouth. It is not a leverage uh, item and it does not have to be tight. I do not want to put all the adjustments on mine because then it makes really bulky. So I'm gonna put the buckle in the middle and it's just for looks. I am then going to thread through, glue it down on one side, thread it through the other side and glue it down so that it's gonna sit like that. And you can adjust that to your model. You're not doing all the adjustments, which can be done on there. You really only need it twice the length of what you're actually gonna use. And there's my chin strap. The buckle shows on the outside, in other words, the underneath. And you can see by gluing it down, it looks a lot neater at our scale. For the reins, I've cut two pieces 13 inches long or whatever you decide you want to use. Now these can be attached, uh, generally they're tied on or there's uh, little hooks on the end. Or in this case, I'm just gonna glue them on. Some people in Western ride with the reins above this uh, curb strap and some people ride with it below. I would go for the models, I would go for below unless you use a reference. And you can do the same knot uh, as we did up here, or just glue them on. And since there's so much going on here, I am just gonna glue them on. And there's the bridle on the horse. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and we're probably gonna be making a saddle to match this shortly. Please check out these other upcoming videos and have a great day.